Hello, ni hao. Hoi ni wala. Welcome back to Wisdom Wednesday with Johnny Tiger. On September 22nd, 2021. A couple of weeks ago, uh, me and my girlfriend, we were beautiful, intelligent girlfriend, can't forget that part, uh, we were on Uber Eats. Browsing through the menu of a local Chinese restaurant, and suddenly I noticed that something was not quite right. You know how sometimes you can just sense that、uh, someone is disturbed around you and uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, confused. Uh, Unhappy, you can sense. You can, you can sense that change in the air. Maybe in the sound. The time is now 4 p.m. Maybe in the sound they made or in the way they、uh, talk.、Uh, so I said,、well, "What's the matter?" And she said, "I I am just not going to eat any of this stuff." And that kind of caught me by surprise, actually, because.、Uh, You know, up until that point, I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary、uh, with that menu,、uh, so I couldn't immediately pinpoint what was the matter. And then I realized, oh yeah, you know, I guess these these things、uh, would appear to be strange to someone who is not Chinese or who is not、uh, immersed. In the Chinese culture,、uh, where dietary and food is concerned, I mean, for a Chinese person, seeing things like pickled pig's feet,、uh, spicy pig's ear, uh, uh, sesame sauce and jellyfish,、uh, and、uh, spicy ox tongue,、uh, marinated soy. Duck neck, things like that. We, we immediately we are thinking of our childhood. We are thinking of、uh, the times when we had these food back at home, and it conjures up so many good memories. So,、uh, I guess we are not really、uh, paying attention to the words we are reading. We we immediately、uh, can taste the food. We immediately can、uh, remember all all the fondness we have our. Uh, our cultural connection to these food,、uh, so it's easy for us to forget、uh, how strange and crazy and disturbing these things may appear、uh, to someone、uh, from a different culture. I remember、uh, there was a, actually a big a joke.、Uh, it was a real incident that happened, and actually kind of funny. Uh, in the uh, early '90s, when Taiwan was、uh, starting to open up for more tourism, more outsiders to come into Taiwan and travel and have fun, and people from Taiwan started to travel outside, and more people were、uh, traveling by airplane.、Uh, now, Taiwanese people, especially back then. Didn't, mostly didn't have the money to、uh, go on an airplane.、Uh, a lot of the ones that did travel, did fly on, on an airplane, were elderly people that either had money that they saved up, or they have children that purchased a ticket for them、uh, as a, a, a gift、uh, for their retirement or something like that. So a lot of the people that were traveling on airplane. In Taiwan at that time, were seniors, elderly people who had never been out of Taiwan previously, who had never had a stake in their life, who had never held a fork in their hand. So a lot of these seniors were finding that the kind of food they got on a lot of airlines were bad. They were awful, and like the reviews. Were just negative all across the board. They hated salad because,、uh, if you have not noticed, Chinese people generally don't like raw vegetable. Uh, uh, 
because well, especially in Taiwan when I was growing up, eating raw vegetable was a uh, your your is an invitation for getting sick. I mean, we knew what they put on vegetables back then. A lot of time they put a、uh, uh, uh, human excrement in fertilizers, and、uh, a lot of that time it's like animal byproduct decaying sea f- seafood decaying. Uh, shellfish. They use that in fertilizer. So, like, you, you're not going to pick a carrot and think, "Oh, this is so delicious. If I can just eat it raw," because you're thinking of all the things that they put on it to make it grow. So, you want to take it home, wash it until it's、uh, make sure it's clean, looks clean, and then wash it some more, and then boil it to death or fry it to death before you eat it, and and then. Try very hard not to think about the fertilizer. Yeah, so that 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 is that. So for Taiwanese people, especially these senior Taiwanese people, to come across salad on an airplane, it was devastating to them. It was disgusting. Like, ooh, like what what are they trying to? Are they trying to feed pigs? These are you only give raw vegetable to pigs. You don't give it to human. And 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 especially when we pay so much money for air for to to fly. Like, come on. Uh, and then when they got things like steak or hamburger, they didn't like that stuff either because those didn't taste like any kind of food they were used to. This beef is too tough, beef is too lean. There's hardly any flavor. And、uh, how come there's bread? How come there's no rice? Okay, where's 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 our noodle and stuff like that? So to、uh, appease some of these wealthy. Elderly people to make them want to fly more. A lot of Chinese and Taiwanese airlines started to make exceptions and allow them to bring their own food onto the airplane.、Uh, I'm not just talking about peanuts and uh, chips. Uh, basically, they could bring their own fried rice if they wanted to onto the airplane, and uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 flight attendant would be. Willing to help them heat it up or whatever,、uh, you don't see that kind of、uh, thing much nowadays. Last time when I brought a sandwich onto an airplane, I had to actually uh, uh, lie to the flight attendant, tell them that I was diabetic, that that or、uh, and I was、uh, allergic to a lot of stuff. That's why I brought my own sandwich. Otherwise, they weren't going to allow me to.、Um, so anyway. Um, the story goes. I remember seeing this on the news.、Uh, it, it, there was a American tourist, a beautiful American girl, blonde hair, blue eyes, a college student, never been out of U.S., didn't know anything about Chinese culture, came to Taiwan to uh, uh, basically tour the island. And she was on one of the domestic flights from Taipei to Kaohsiung,、uh, basically from north to, to south. And she fell asleep as soon as she got on the plane. And then、uh, about half an hour later, she woke up. She, and picture this: this white girl, this white girl, totally big, blue eyes, innocent, like a Hollywood. Disney princess opened her eyes, and her, she heard some weird crunching noises to her left and right. And then she looked around herself, and there's all these wrinkly, old, strange-looking Asian,、uh, in her own words, like witches. She thought they looked like witches, but they were just regular Taiwanese old women. But、uh, anyway, uh, she she said they looked like witches, and they looked like they were eating、uh, animal body parts. Like they have claws, chicken claws, and duck head, and 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 entrails in front of them, and they were just eating it with their hand. And and so, uh, she started screaming blue murder. She thought she died and went to hell, and that that became a little bit of a、uh, international scandal and a little bit of a joke. Uh, but yeah,、uh, so a lot of people who are not Taiwanese, not Chinese, 
like it's hard for them to uh, come across the kind of food we regard as delicacies or、uh, munchies or snack food in Taiwan in China. So today I'm going to give you a quick little tour of、uh, the most common snack food, most common. Drinking food, the most common munchies and、uh, delicacies for my people. That other people,、uh, unless you are kind of unique,、uh, I know European people eat these things too. So I I I know that、uh, you know if you're from Europe, you understand this. But you know, for our Canadian and American friends. Uh, this hopefully will give you kind of a little bit insight into why we eat what we eat, and isn't really not that disgusting. Now, first, let's start by、uh, talking about innards.、Uh, innards, eating the innards of animals, has been has long histories, long-standing history in China for Chinese people. However. Nowadays, innards are kind of expensive. You want to buy pork intestine, you want to buy、uh, pig heart, chicken heart. It's actually more expensive than buying the meat.、Uh, that's only for now because a lot of people like to eat that now. But if we go back fifty、uh, years ago, for thousands of years, the animal entrails, animal innards, were What they called poor man's luxury, poor man's luxury, because back then, people were so poor that most of them couldn't afford to buy actual meat. So the only way they could get their protein, they could get their meat product, was to buy the part that the wealthy people didn't eat,、uh, the entrails, the heart, the liver,、uh, the the stomach,、uh, the brain. So for thousands of years,、uh, the majority of poverty-stricken Chinese people have to survive on these things as their little bit of、uh, luxury when they, whenever they feel like having a little bit of meat in their diet.、Uh, and so the people who were eating these were really poor. The people who were selling these were also very poor because they were poor people who couldn't afford to. Uh, buy and sell pig, buy and sell、uh, cattle, buy and sell chicken. So they basically waited around until someone butchered a pig, someone butchered a goat, and they bought、uh, the part that were going to get thrown out anyway. And then they cook it up and、uh, make it nice and tasty, and then sell it to other poor people.、Uh, so it was a, a, a low-income kind of、uh, economy. Uh, as far as meat products went, quite often、uh, people who sold the innards, uh, uh, they usually cook them in hot sauce and soy sauce and brown sugar and、uh, garlic and ginger,、uh, and you can eat it、uh, either on rice on noodle or just put it in,、uh, roll it up in a Chinese pancake or Chinese crepe. And eat it that way.、Uh, these people, the seller of these food, they're always、uh, located near、uh, the roadside、uh, brew houses,、uh, some of these cheap drinking places where hard labor folk would go and maybe have a beer at the end of the day. While they're drinking, they feel like having a something to eat, and oh, look right there, someone selling、uh, stewed pig intestine. Stew chicken heart, and、uh, they're really really cheap. You can buy like a pound of them for maybe what equivalent to ten、uh, cents our money today.、Uh, so that's how Chinese people、uh, first started eating、uh, the innards and entrails of animals.、Uh, now, why did it become suddenly、uh, a delicacy? Well,、um, the rich people. Back then, a lot of the royalties, a lot of the noblemen, noble women, they got tired of the kind of food they were getting every day. All the 
expensive ribeye steaks and expensive uh, uh, soy chicken and and fried rice and and lobsters and uh, 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 fish and all that stuff. They got tired of that, um, and they wanted to experience something different. So, a lot of them, they were afraid to be judged by their peer、uh, for eating commoners' food. So a lot of them would disguise themselves. They would dress themselves up as beggars, or、uh, prostitutes, or gangsters. They would dress them up to be like the most low-class people, and、uh, sneak out and go sit at one of these cheap, low-level、uh, brew houses and have a cheap glass of beer and talk to some commoner girl, a、uh, commoner. Uh, uh, Stud, uh, uh, whatever, wherever their taste ran, and try some of these commoner food. So back then, there was actually a, a say for Chinese people that when you see someone who dressed really shabbily, really、uh, grungy, sitting、uh, at one of these tables uh, eating uh, these uh, entrails, these intestines, these uh, uh, innards, don't judge them. Don't Uh, treats them badly because you don't know this may be the emperor in disguise,、uh, because that actually happened before.、Uh, so、um, more and more rich folks、uh, started doing that, and gradually someone decided, you know,、uh, it's kind of a drag. Every time we want to eat this, we got to dress up as a beggar. So why don't we、um, uh, put some money in? To fund our own restaurant and get cooks that actually know how to cook these things. Uh, so, uh, innards, heart, liver, stomach,、uh, intestines, kidneys,、uh, they became highly valued. And uh, uh, everywhere in Taiwan, everywhere in China, you can get them either in big five-star hotels or tiny little roadside vendors.、Uh, and、uh, it's a Definite delicacy for my people. I myself, particularly, I enjoy chicken heart,、uh, pork intestine, pork、uh, pig ears, and uh, uh, things of that nature.、Uh, so, yeah,、uh, I know it's weird for some people, but I do、uh, enjoy these. These are the food that I grew up with, and、uh, often like to. Snack on, especially when I first started learning how to drink when I was a teenager. Yeah, I started early.、Uh, <laughs> these were the food that I、uh, munch on while I was getting drunk.、Um, now,、uh, for innards, we see most popular is、uh, pork product, pork heart, pork liver, pork intestine, and then it's a、uh, uh, sheep or goat.、Uh, Intestine and heart and liver. There is,、uh, for the most part, you will not see a cow. You will not see、uh, oxen or ox,、uh, heart, liver, intestine. The only place that is popularly served、uh, these innards from、uh, bovine is Guangzhou,、uh, the province Guangzhou,、uh, aka the Uh, home of Cantonese language.、Uh, why is that? Well, Chinese people have always shied away from eating beef、uh, for thousands and thousands of years, and there's two reasons for it. Well, actually, there's three three reasons for it. One,、uh, most people didn't have the space to raise cattle.、Uh, China has always been immensely large, but overpopulated.、Uh, a lot of people were farmers. They, they, if there's any spare land, they use it to grow things. They didn't want to you know, raise this large animal that eat a lot. <laughs> so、uh, cattle wasn't really all that、uh, commonplace in, for Chinese people.、Um, This is why cowboy culture has never been very big in China. Chinese people have a hard time understanding country music, 
hard time understanding cowboy culture and Western culture because of that. So that's the first reason because cattle wasn't very commonplace. Second,、uh, because if you had a bovine, if you have an oxen, a cow, an ox, you use that animal to plow the land. You don't kill it and eat it. You use that to help you plow the field, to help you grow、uh, more rice, more wheat,、uh, more corn. So that animal is your、uh, excavator. That that's your machine. You you don't eat your excavator.、Uh, third, because Chinese people has been heavily into Buddhism uh, since uh, about、uh, fifth, fourth or fifth century. So about fifteen、uh, hundred years.、Um, and in Bud, of course, Buddhism was introduced to China by、uh, from India and. Indian people、uh, definitely see cow, bovine as a sacred, holy animal. You you don't eat that. It's a、uh, uh, uh, there's a lot of Buddhists that they just don't eat beef because of that. So three reasons together made it so、uh, eating beef has always been、uh, just kind of a no no in Chinese culture for thousands of years.、Uh, let me tell you how it's. Uh, crazy it was、uh, until about 200 years ago. So prior to 200 years ago, for thousands of years, if you wanted to butcher a cow, if you wanted to slaughter a cattle for meat, you needed to go to the local magistrate. You need to go to your local city hall and get the approval of the mayor. You need to get it on paper. Okay, I have a cow at home. This cow is、uh, really old and can no longer work the field, or this cow is sick and not going to survive. I'm going to kill it for meat. You need you need an official okay for that. If you didn't, if you、uh, slaughter a cattle、uh, without permit, you could end up in jail for a long time. That's how serious it was. Now, why why is Guangzhou the、uh, only place? That is、uh, popularly serving beef entrails and beef heart and beef innards,、uh, because from the Ming Dynasty,、uh, so about、uh, let's say five, four hundred years ago, five hundred years ago, of,、uh, from the Ming Dynasty,、uh, Guangzhou was China's first line of、uh, contact with outside world. More and more Europeans, American. Uh, people from other parts of the world coming to China, and the first place they、uh, go is Guangzhou. That's where the ship would dock. So Guangzhou started to take on a lot of Western culture, and Western culture means beef, hamburgers, steak.、Uh, so to、uh, to make that these merchants, these white merchants, kept coming back.、Uh, people in Guangzhou started raising cattle, selling cattle, and、uh, selling meat. But it led to kind of a problem because a lot of these white people didn't eat the innards. They didn't eat the heart and livers and 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 entrails and brain. They just wanted the steak. So a lot of these animals, after、uh, the meat gets sold, the rest of the animal end up going to waste, being thrown away.、Uh, so、uh, a lot of the poor people started buying up what's left of the animal.、Uh, the And and started using them in very creative way in all kind of stews and stir fries and food. So this is why、uh, the city of、uh, the province of Guangzhou has a, a bit of a history for being the only place in China that will、uh, you can find beef innards easily. Now speaking of how、uh, Chinese people is a.、Uh, uh, Kind of、uh, being shy about eating beef. Eating beef has been being kind of a taboo. This also、uh, evolved into why、uh, another very popular side dish became popular.、Uh, Chinese people love eating、uh, the sliced meat from the pig's head. So as I know for European people, that's called head cheese. 
uh, Chinese people cook it a little bit differently, but it's the same thing. It's a meat sliced from the head of the pig. Uh, so the pig head meat, zhu tou rou in my language, Mandarin, zhu tou rou, he, uh, pig head meat, uh, is a very popular dish. And nowadays, it's more expensive than any other part of the pig. Uh, again, uh, back 100 years ago, uh, for thousands of years, that was the cheap part of the animal. <laughs> no one would uh, bother to eat it. Uh, interestingly enough, how the pig's head meat became so popular was due to uh, Buddhism. Because a lot of time when Chinese people were uh, paying respect to the gods, and when there's a big ceremony, they like to slaughter animals, like sort of uh, like uh, as a sacrifice to to the gods, to Buddha. Um, but because Buddhism said uh, no beef, oh, okay, well, cow is out, and uh, goat and sheep, they were kind of hard to come by as well. The most popular was pig, because uh, pig was easy to feed, easy to raise. A lot of people had pig in their uh, just in, uh, in the backyard. Uh, so uh, pig became kind of like the go-to for being sacrificed to the god. Now, every time uh, the sacrificial ceremony is over, what do you do with the pig? You can't just throw it away. You got to eat it. So uh, the good meat gets sold to rich people, and the rest, the innards and the meat from the feet and the head, gets sold to poor people. Even more interesting is, for the longest time, the most delicious, the most popular pig head meat came from a Buddhist temple in uh, the, the temple called Fa Hai, Fa Hai Temple uh, in China. And thousands of people from all over China would go to the temple and pay big money for the monk there to cook them this dish uh, with the pig head meat. Now, aren't monks vegetarian? Like, what, what's going on there? How can these monks be the most popular, most famous people in China to make this uh, pig head meat? How did they uh, become so famous for that? Well, the story goes, that let's go back about 200 years. Uh, there was a couple of junior monks in the Fahai temple who, um, let's just say, they were not completely uh, trained. They were not completely Zen. So one night uh, they were sitting together and one of them said, you know, I, I, I enjoy being a monk, but I really miss having meat. Can, can we get some meat? Uh, maybe, maybe we get some meat and just don't let anyone else know. And so they pulled their money together, but back then uh, they didn't have enough money to buy uh, good quality meat. So they ended up buying just the head of the pig because that was a cheap part that usually gets thrown out. So that's all they could afford. Well, okay, so now they got the uh, head. What, what was it going to do with it? They couldn't just bring it to the kitchen in a, a temple because, you know, next thing you know, the uh, the the, the uh, head monk would hear about it and they would get punished. So they came up with a rather creative solution. Those two junior monks, they went and bought a brand new chamber pot. And they put the pig head in the chamber pot with a little bit of water and whatever uh, a condiment they could steal from the kitchen, salt and pepper and soy sauce and garlic. They put it all in the chamber pot. They uh, cover the chamber pot up with clay, bury it in the mud, and uh, started heating that little mound in the mud with a candle they took from the monastery. It took them a night and a day to finally get that thing cooked. But apparently, after they cooked it, it was so delicious 
that the the, the fragrance of the cooked meat、uh, went through the entire monastery, and even the Lord Monk, the the head monk himself, came out, and even he couldn't resist、uh, but to try a piece of this this、uh, pig head meat cooked inside a chamber pot. So for the last two hundred years, if you Had the fortune to go to Fa Hai Temple in China, and if you have the money to buy、uh, one of these dishes from a monk, you will notice that even now they still cook the pig's head inside a chamber pot. Of course, it's always brand new chamber pot. It's not going to be used chamber pot, but still, just the thought of it is a little bit uh, 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 disgusting, but. You know,、uh, it was a creative way for the junior monk to come up with to cook the meat.、Um, a lot of people who been to dim sum restaurants know about the spicy,、uh, spicy duck neck and the spicy chicken feet.、Uh, now, these two dishes has only been popular in China. Uh, for the last twenty, thirty years. Prior to that, no one ate those things. Prior to that, like they, they, they were、uh, not even worthwhile eating. I mean, how much meat can you get off of chicken feet and duck neck? Not much.、Uh, chicken feet only became popular in China when Cantonese people,、uh, mostly started in Hong Kong,、uh, started、uh, cooking them and introducing them to Shanghai and the rest of. China in the early 90s,、um, and suddenly that became、uh, a pastime, a, 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 a delicacy, and you are not even allowed to call them chicken feet anymore. On Chinese menu, they are supposed to be called phoenix claws, phoenix claws. Okay, these are not chicken; these are phoenix, and these are not just feet; these are claws. That that just makes the whole dish sound a lot more mystical and、uh, amazing. But they're just、uh, very ordinary chicken feet.、Uh, you dip them in chili sauce and you slowly、uh, chew the meat off the bone. I personally don't care for it because it's a lot of work and very little to eat. But、uh, the flavor is quite amazing. Spicy duck neck is another one. Now the origin of spicy duck neck only start in 1993,、uh, in Wuhan, China. I know that place's name is almost taboo nowadays because of the silly、uh, COVID situation. Wuhan, China is like、uh, the the the、uh, black sheep of the family right now. But Wuhan, China, the origin of spicy duck neck. The story goes in 1993. Uh, in a very high-profile, very high-priced Chinese restaurant in Wuhan, China,、uh, there was a cook who decided that it's not fair for people to come and pay so much money and have to wait so long for the dishes to get made because they were so busy. So sometimes you can place your order and it will take an hour before you get your food. So this cook decided that、uh, he's going to. Make a big vat of spicy marinade, and whenever he cook barbecue duck, because no one ever wanted the neck, he just throw the neck in there in the marinade. And whenever there are people waiting、uh, for a long time for their food, he would bring them a plate of these marinated spicy duck neck free of charge, just to tie you over like a little appetizer, and a little bit.、Uh, Beyond belief,、uh, these spicy duck neck became such a hit that so many people were trying to order them in the restaurant. That this chef gradually got to the point where he quit being a chef and opened his own store specifically to sell spicy duck neck. And soon after, spicy duck neck became so popular that people started copying the recipe. All over China and Taiwan, so nowadays,、uh, when you see people drinking、uh, on the side of the road or in a pub in Taiwan or China, that's almost always going to be 
a spicy duck neck nearby for them to munch on. So uh, there's just so much more to talk about when it comes to Chinese food. It's quirks and weirdness and it's uh, amazing history and all the different flavors and uh, the do's and don'ts. But I hope uh, today at least give you a little uh, bit of a, a base knowledge. The next time you look at a Chinese menu, you wouldn't be thinking about, oh God, what kind of savages eat pig intestine and uh, uh, chicken feet. I hope next time you will see these dishes and think of this episode and say, oh yeah, okay, okay, I, I, I remember hearing about these. I wonder what they taste like. And I hope that you will find it in yourself to give them a try and maybe like them. Thank you for checking out today's Wisdom Wednesday. We'll be back again tomorrow for Toy Thursday. For now, have a good rest of the day.